Welcome to Neuropraxis Family Friends of TBI Survivor Support Group Week 4 Module. We kindly ask that you complete this survey by scanning the QR code or accessing the link in the description box below. It will only take about one minute and will gather your baseline knowledge before continuing on to the educational portion. The goal for this module is for you to gain an understanding of the importance of stress management, how unmanaged stress affects the body, a general understanding of stress management techniques, and how to include these techniques into your life. Before we get started, here is the World Health Organization's definition of stress. Stress can be defined as any type of change that causes physical, emotional, or psychological strain. Stress is your body's response to anything that requires attention or action. Everyone experiences stress to some degree. The way you respond to stress makes a big difference in your overall well-being. Current caregiver statistics report around 6.7 million caregivers in California, which is roughly one in four Californians who provide care to someone who is either aging, ill, or living with a chronic disease. Roughly one in four report providing more than 20 hours of direct care to their loved one, with many reporting this role as being financially stressful, while one in seven Californians reported experiencing negative health outcomes from the stressors that come from caregiving. Although caregiving has positive benefits, it is associated with negative health effects, such as caregiver stress syndrome. Many caregivers report time constraints reduce their ability to take advantage of preventative health services like annual doctor checkups and even financial difficulties in affording health care for themselves, and many report placing their needs last on the priority list. We all experience some level of stress on a daily basis. However, there is a good type of stress, like the stress we feel before a big game, before starting a new job, buying a new home, or the birth of your first child. This type of stress is invigorating, short in duration, manageable, and ultimately makes you feel motivated. But bad stress is chronic in nature. It spans for years, it's unmanaged, and it makes you feel drained, exhausted, and dreading facing the next day. This can be caused by trauma to you or your loved one, relationship issues, or financial difficulties. For the sake of this module, we will focus on managing the unhealthy type of stress, which can lead to health issues if they go unmanaged. Caregiver stress syndrome has several associated names like caregiver burnout and even compassion fatigue. Here we have provided the signs that you may be experiencing caregiver associated stress. If you're noticing these signs in yourself, this would be a good time to notify your doctor, healthcare team, or begin using stress management techniques, or utilize the stress tips we will learn later in this module. Key indicators of unmanaged emotional stress include feeling isolated, feeling overwhelmed, and even guilty for making time for yourself. Physical signs of unmanaged stress can include always feeling tired no matter how much you sleep, being unable to sleep throughout the night, or even fluctuations in your body weight. Unmanaged mental stress can lead to headaches, forgetfulness, and the lack of interest in doing the things you once enjoyed. Since we now know how to identify the signs of caregiver stress, we will now learn how not managing these stressors can affect your health in the long term. Specifically, the physical consequences can include muscle tightness or experiencing knots in your back and neck from tightening your muscles when you are under stress, and this can happen even if you're not aware of it. Stress can also trigger respiratory symptoms such as shortness of breath, asthma attacks, bronchitis, emphysema, or COPD symptoms. When we feel stress, it is often accompanied by increased heart rate and blood pressure. This is due to our fight or flight response, which is our body's natural response to stress, but in the long term, it can lead to an increased risk of heart attack, stroke, or hypertension. Chronic stress can also reduce the good gut bacteria that ensures our smooth digestion and absorption of nutrients from our food, which in turn has a significant impact on our mood and cognition. High levels of stress can trigger stomach ulcer pain, bloating, vomiting, nausea, or loss of appetite. This can become worse if you tend to eat processed foods or drink alcohol to self soothe when you are stressed. Stress can also impact how our bodies process and expel food we eat by leading to diarrhea or constipation, and individuals living with irritable bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel syndrome can experience a worsening of these symptoms when their stress goes unmanaged. Chronic stress can lead to worsening of depression, anxiety, or onset of these mental health disorders. 
Long-term stress can lead to alcohol or drug addiction, but not only do they cause physical effects, but lead to financial hardships or destroy relationships and even put your life in danger. Being under constant and managed stress can also cause us to become more irritable, feeling on edge, or being unable to relax. Stress can also lead to a sleep disorder known as insomnia that impairs our ability to sleep throughout the night, staying up longer than usual, or being unable to fall asleep. Not getting adequate or enough sleep can lead to many health-related consequences and even speed up the rate you will see health-related effects of stress. Sleep is vital for our bodies to undergo repair and prepare our minds to handle what we need to do for the next day. The CDC recommends adults between 18 to 60 years old need 7 or more hours of consistent, uninterrupted sleep, and those who are 60 years and older need around 7 to 9 hours of uninterrupted sleep. Lastly, our body's hormones can also become imbalanced due to unmanaged stress. Cortisol and adrenaline are known as our stress response hormones. When released too often, they can lead to an impaired immune system, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and heart disease. It can also affect our sex drive and lead to fertility difficulties for both men and women. In this section, we will now go over stress management techniques that you can include in your daily life. Following the pandemic, there has been an increase in mental health awareness and booming amount of content on the internet that can support our well-being and reduce our stress. Here, we have provided some techniques or activities that are known to reduce stress. Most of these activities are free and can even be done in one minute or up to 20 minutes a day. On this slide, you will notice that there are several activities that are bolded. That is because we have provided an interactive activity at the end of this module in which we will practice how to incorporate it into your daily life. As mentioned in module three, gratitude journaling has been found to be an effective stress, fear, and resentment reducing activity that only takes about one to five minutes to complete, and it's recommended to complete it at least three times a week, and you can pick any time of the day to implement it. Yoga Nidra has a big impact in stress management and has also been found to improve energy levels throughout the day. Meditation is a practice of focusing on one's mind for a period of time, noticing but not engaging with thoughts accompanied by either physical relaxation or breathing techniques. My favorite for anxiety and stress is grounding. This technique uses all five of your senses to self-soothe, such as focusing on the five things that you can see in this moment, four things you can hear in this moment, three things you can smell in your environment, two things you can feel right now, and one thing that you can currently taste or imagine tasting. Progressive muscle relaxation, aka PMR, involves tensing and then relaxing your muscles one by one. Breathing techniques have been found to trigger the parasympathetic response in our bodies that reduce stress. Box breathing includes exhaling to a count of four, holding your breath for a count of four, inhaling for four seconds, and holding air for a count of four, and then repeating that pattern for about three to five times. The Wim Hof Method is a guided breathing exercise created to reduce stress and anxiety. Wim Hof's breathing technique videos last around 10 minutes and are a great way to start or end your day. Guided Breathing techniques are free on apps or YouTube where you can watch a cool graphic as you help control your breath. You can find a multitude of YouTube videos that can teach you how to do any of these breathing techniques for free. However, if you do have any health issues like emphysema, asthma, COPD, bronchitis, or other respiratory illnesses, it is best to consult with your doctor before incorporating them into your everyday life and is recommended to never do these breathing techniques in or around water. Lastly, expressing yourself through hobbies or passions are also a great avenue to relieve stress and exit your current moment to a time of fun and relaxation. I highly recommend meetup groups if you love socializing and meeting people, as they offer a multitude of hiking, yoga classes, and other types of classes to meet others in person or via online. Again, I will highly suggest consulting with your doctor if you have health concerns that can be aggravated by adding additional physical activity into your day. So now that we have learned some ideas for stress relief and how important it is to our health, here are some tips in finding time to relieve stress in your routine. 
First and foremost, set aside a certain time throughout each day or schedule certain days in the week or even one day a week where you plan on engaging in something that helps you feel more refreshed. You can set phone reminders or use a calendar app in your phone to schedule events to remind you that it's time for some relaxation. A great thing about the calendar app is that you can invite others to be included in the memo of your 10 minutes of me time. And it can also include a note that you will not be available between 10 a.m. to 10, 10 a.m. Or take full advantage of that do not disturb option on your phone. Just remember to turn it back on once you are finished. And if you're having a hard time finding more than 10 minutes relaxation, start by setting aside five minutes a day of doing something that you have found to be more fun or relaxing, such as gratitude journaling, meditating, or deep breathing. YouTube is a great resource to find five minute relaxing activities. They even have five minute workouts if exercise is your go-to relaxing practice. Next, if you share caregiving responsibilities with family members or friends, let them know you have plans for stress relief before the week begins. So you can set aside that time to not only focus on yourself, but as a way to set the boundary of not contacting you during that period of time. After you have decided what you will do, create a clear goal of what or how you plan to incorporate this practice as a means to make it more achievable. For example, if your goal is to incorporate gratitude journaling, set a realistic goal for yourself. Like, before I go to work, I will spend five minutes with my gratitude journal at least three times this week. Make sure that goal is specific on what you will do, achievable so you set the correct timing, and length that is realistic for your schedule. Also, inviting your friends or family to join you can make the activity even more relaxing because you get to spend time with someone you love while also experiencing something that is good for your health. However, we suggest setting a boundary that you both will spend time enjoying that activity and not venting about what is going on in your life. Remember, you do not have to start off with a complete hour to do self-care or stress relief. It can be as small as five minutes a day and gradually adding more time or frequency of stress relieving practice into your routine. The actual act of stress management may take time for you to get used to, but eventually it'll come more easily as you continue to practice it in your life. Now it's time to practice what we learned. The following gratitude exercise was provided by Dr. Andrew Huberman, a Stanford professor, ophthalmologist, and researcher and based in the published findings provided by Aparicio et al. and Hazlitt et al. Recent literature has provided insight on how to get the most benefit from daily gratitude. This is done by retelling the experience of genuine gratitude as a narrative or story. And this can be done by retelling a story to yourself about a time you experienced genuine thanks from another person or you witnessed another person receiving genuine gratitude. You can do this by noting the emotional state before and after the gratitude was given, key context or elements that add to the significance of that experience of gratitude, like the relationships of the people involved, the location, the method of giving thanks, or even the timing. At this time, you can pause the video and implement the steps we have provided and reflect on how this experience of gratitude made you feel in the past and in the present. At this time, you can follow along to the recording of the progressive muscle relaxation activity or click the link to watch on your own browser. This progressive muscle relaxation exercise is often used to reduce muscle tension, aid relaxation, and lower stress levels. So in this exercise, we're going to concentrate on particular muscle groups in your body. You'll be tensing these muscles as hard as you can for five counts and then relaxing. Begin by finding a comfortable position and it's usually better if you can lie down. Close or half close your eyes. Focus on the way you breathe out and relax. Now, focus your attention on your feet. Curl your toes under and tense your feet as hard as you can for five counts. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, and release the tension. Relax your feet and notice how the muscles in your feet are feeling looser. Now bring your attention to the muscles in your legs and tense them for as hard as you can for five counts. 
Ready. One, two, three, four, five, and relax your muscles completely. Feel the tension being released from your muscles and feel your legs becoming lighter. Okay, bring your attention to the muscles in your arms and hands. Start by bending your arms and you're going to tense your arm muscles and squeeze your fists as hard as you can and hold for five counts. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, and release. Extend your arms and lower them to your sides. And feel your arm muscles relax. Next, concentrate on the muscles in your neck and shoulders. Slowly bring your shoulders to your ears and tense your shoulder muscles for five counts. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, and release. Feel the muscles in your neck and shoulders drop and relax. You're now going to tense all of your facial muscles, including tensing your jaw. So you might want to carefully press your teeth together and squeeze your cheeks like this. And you're going to hold that for five counts. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, and release. And now feel all the muscles in your face relax. And notice how this feeling of relaxation extends down your neck and to your shoulders. Now start to wiggle your toes and your fingers and gently start to move your head and shoulders and open your eyes. At this time, you can watch the recording or click the link to watch it on your own browser. Billions of people suffer from stress. And there are tools to combat stress that involve things like meditation, breath work, good nutrition, good social connections, and avoiding all bad things in life. And while those are powerful, the problem is they require that people step away from the stress-inducing activity. By contrast, my lab and other laboratories have been very interested in developing tools that allow us to push back on stress, in other words, feel more calm in real time, meaning without having to disengage from the stress-inducing activity. The best way that I am aware to do that is called the physiological sigh. A physiological sigh is a pattern of breathing that involves two inhales followed by an extended exhale. Physiological sighs were discovered in the 1930s as a pattern of breathing that people go into spontaneously when they are in claustrophobic environments or in deep sleep when there's a buildup of a gas called carbon dioxide in the bloodstream. Carbon dioxide triggers the impulse to breathe. There are neurons in the brain that know when carbon dioxide levels have gotten too high, and when the levels get too high, they trigger inhale and exhale, or double inhale and exhale. Now, you can do physiological size voluntarily anytime you're feeling too stressed and you want to feel more calm. You do it like this. So it's a double inhale, and typically the first inhale is longer than the second, but the second one is still important to do, and then a very long extended exhale. Typically both inhales are through the nose, and the exhale is through the mouth. That's the most effective way to do the physiological sigh. However, if you can't breathe through your nose or your mouth for whatever reason, do it all through your mouth or all through your nose. The second inhale is really important because your lungs are not just two big bags of air. They're two big bags of air with lots of little sacs, millions of sacs. And if you were to lay out those sacs, their volume is as big as a tennis court. And that allows both the intake of more oxygen, but also the offload of carbon dioxide. So when you do the double inhale, it reinflates any of these little sacs that have collapsed. And in doing so, it allows you to offload more carbon dioxide. So if you're feeling stressed in any circumstance, inhale twice through the nose, and then exhale long through the mouth. If you want, you can repeat it a second or even a third time, but typically just one or two, maybe three physiological sighs are sufficient to bring your level of stress and alertness down very fast and allow you to feel more calm. We have reached the end of this module, and we have covered the importance of stress management, the negative health effects of unmanaged stress, how common caregiver stress is, 
and some techniques that can help you support your well-being. Here are some key takeaways from this module. Stress management is vital to your health in the long term. Your experience is commonly felt by many caregivers, but taking time for yourself is never selfish, but necessary for good health. Being open to trying new practices while being patient with yourself is an important step in finding what works. Lastly, stress management may take time to get used to, but with consistent application, it will become easier. At this time, we kindly ask that you complete our second survey for this module. You can scan the QR code or access the link in the description box below. It should take only about one minute to complete. Christine Weaver and Dr. Krista Ogis have provided a free webinar on the benefits of Yoga Nidra on stress and on the brain. You can access this free webinar by clicking the link or clicking the image on the slide. These state-based organizations help caregivers navigate the healthcare process while also supporting your well-being through classes or free resources. Charity care can cover partial or full amount of your healthcare or your loved one's healthcare expenses. Access the links we have provided here or ask your hospital about their charity care policy. Provided here are California-based acts and bills that protect caregivers as they request time off while taking on additional responsibilities for their loved one. Here are some brain injury based podcasts and websites that can increase your knowledge of the brain injury process and knowledge of how to support your well-being as a caregiver. The Neuropractice website hosts free relaxation resources for caregivers and brain injury survivors. You can also access these links to help bring in more stress relief throughout your day. Here are some safety resources we have provided for you or your loved one. We would like to thank all the brain injury researchers, websites, and organizations who have provided the information included in this module. This module was created by Vanessa Rivera, an occupational therapy doctor student at West Coast University Center for Graduate Studies and doctor intern at Neuropraxis Rehab under the supervision of Christine Weaver, the CEO and founder of Neuropraxis, an occupational therapist with over 29 years of experience within the brain injury rehab setting. This module's material is for information and support and not a substitute for doctor or healthcare team advice for you or your loved one.